Okay, in lieu of an opening statement, we'll take two questions for Coach Davis. Please let, uh, let us get the handheld mic to you. Let us know who you are, who you're with. First question, far right. Yeah, uh, Jeremiah Holloway with Inside Carolina. <clears throat> Hubert, um, of course, Michigan State, they were able to get up 12 early on, kind of got, looked like they were able to get some looks that they wanted. I guess, simply put, you know, what kind of change for you guys, what allowed you guys to not only, you know, storm back, but maintain the lead the rest of the game? Well, we started to compete. I mean, they, they, they punched first. Uh, their physicality, their will, their want to, uh, the first 10 minutes of the game just overwhelmed us. They were catching the ball wherever they wanted to, close to the basket on the block. They were getting layups, second chance opportunities defensively. They were pushing us off of our screens, our spots. They just were playing better than us. And you know, we came into the huddle and I said, look, we can't talk about any basketball stuff until we, we join the fight. And um, once that started, uh, the level of play in terms of the energy and effort, attention to detail rose, then that's when things started to change. And you know, we always talk about how do you react and how do you respond? And these guys, the whole team, reacted and responded the right way after going down, was it 14 in the first half? Okay, back to the room. Uh, Michael Coe, WCHL, Chapelboro.com. Coach, this was, the, the bad start was sort of similar to the Clemson game in the Smith Center when they went up early, using an early timeout. What was the difference in this, in you guys being able to complete the comeback this time and versus the Clemson game? Yeah, I don't, really relate this game to the Clemson game. Um, but just for me personally, I just, you know, just quickly haven't thought any similarities between those two games. I just know that Michigan State came out really aggressive on both ends of the floor. And, you know, from a physical standpoint, we didn't, we didn't match it or surpass it. And once, once that changed, everything else changed. I felt like defensively, we were getting over screens. We were talking on defense. We were fighting front in the post. We were boxing out. We were rebounding. We were defending without fouling. And so I think the change came on both ends, not just offensively, but defensively as well. OK, we take questions for the student athletes now. Second row to our right. Brett Freelander, SaturdayRoad.com. Mondo, how much did the early foul down here? Uh, how much did the early foul kind of knock you back a little bit defensively? And not just you, but by extension, the entire team. And, and what was the trigger that kind of got the defensive intensity back up? Yeah, I thought early on just getting that one foul, it definitely was tough. But even still with that, I thought at the beginning, I definitely could have did a better job of making that big man catch it out farther. And I mean, at the college level, once you let a big man get it right there in the circle, it's going in six times out of 10. So. That was tough, but I mean, what really changed it for us defensively was Paxson coming in. I thought he really made a huge uh, impact on us and he really got us going. And for him to come in like that and step up when his number's <clears> called, I mean, it just speaks on just guys being ready to play on our team. Okay, second row in the aisle. Hey, Kelly Blackman for the Niner Times. Harrison, you had some really critical shots out there tonight. How do you think that just helped um, energize the pace of the offense? You know, for me, it's all about team basketball. And today, you know, I was open and they, they found me, Armando, RJ, Elliot, they found me when I was open. And you know, luckily I was able to open the shots. But, you know, as, as for us, as UNC, we're all about the team. And, you know, we played together today. Front row to our left. Tom Shanahan from Spartan Mag. For Armando and RJ, kind of a big picture question. Can you talk about, A, how your coach successfully replaced a legend? B, bounced back this year after a tough season, used the transfer portal well, and just has established himself in his three years as a coach here. Who was the first one again, I'm sorry? Can you give us a big picture about how your coach over the three seasons yeah. has replaced a legend, mm -hmm. and then you had a tough season, and he used the transfer portal well and rebuilt the team this year? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think Coach Davis has um, done a tremendous job since three years has been here, um, you know, his first year. Um, the way he came in and brought us the way to the national championship. But, I mean, I think the big picture for Coach Davis is what he brings out of the guys. And um, what that is is the passion and the fire competitive spirit to go out there each game and each practice to play to our best of our abilities. And when you have a coach like that, I mean, I think you could go a long way. And um, we rely on him just because we know he's seen the things that we want to experience, and he always tells us that. Um, but then that leads on to the second one of how he did him and the rest of the coach staff did a tremendous job of just going out and grab, grabbing guys like Harrison, Cormac, Jay Witt, Paxson, um, Elliot, Zayden. I mean, they have made a, a tremendous impact in terms of just 
bringing different types of personality to the team. And um, I mean, I, I think everyone just, as soon as they stepped onto the campus, we felt like they belonged and it felt like they were there for four years already. And I mean, I love this team and I just love everybody on it. Yeah, and I mean, I agree with everything RJ said. I mean, it's just so special for us when we got a coach that just has so much belief in us, even sometimes when we may, we may not even believe in ourselves. And I think just all year, just how he's pushed us, but also nurtured us and made sure we were okay and instilled that confidence in us. When it comes to times like this and we go down 12, just knowing that our coaches believe in us and but also are hard on us, it just makes a huge difference. Next question, left dial. Uh, Hunter Bailey with the Highway 49 podcast. This is for RJ. I just want to ask you about Seth Trimble's defense. I mean, quite a few big blocks, first and second half of this game. Just talk about what he brings coming off the bench. I mean, Seth is the best defender in the ACC and one of the best defenders in the country. I mean, just his impact on, on the defensive end has been huge for us all year, especially in today's game. I know there was a couple of times where, um, you know, because we had Tyson Walker out there and Seth had played um, – you know, had the challenge to go out there and guard him. I think he did a great job of just making it hard for him, being physical on the catch, getting over screens. Um, I don't know how many blocks he had, but those I mean, two blocks, those blocks he had was it got us going. He kind of saved us in the second half. So um, he's definitely one of the best defenders in the country, and I'm super proud of him. Back of the room left. Adam Smith with Inside Carolina. A uh, question for Armando and RJ. I think it took – Harrison maybe 12, 13 minutes to, to get his first basket to go, but it seemed like he flipped some sort of a switch there in the first half that helped you guys, you know, find that run you went on. What, what did you see from Harrison in particular? Because he was, you know, it, it kind of looked like a Harrison Ingram game there when he got going. Yeah, well, I mean, Harry, he actually told me yesterday that he was going to put on a big-time performance today. And games like these, when it gets real rowdy and physical and it's in the trenches, we know these are Harry type of games. So, it was no doubt in our mind that he would really show up a big time for us and hit big shots. And the way he defended today was amazing for us. And I mean, we don't win that without him. OK, thanks, guys. We're going to head back to the locker room. They'll be, they'll be available in the hallway outside the Carolina locker room. Good job. Thank you. OK, we'll continue to take questions for Coach Davis. Coach. John Treach, WCCB Charlotte. Given the emptiness you, you felt at the end of season last year, can you just appreciate this? I know you've been down this road a lot, but appreciate this journey and this journey. I appreciate every moment. I appreciate the sunny days and the cloudy days. I've said this a number of times, there's a reason for all seasons, and he's the reason for all seasons, and I'm meaning Jesus. And, and those reasons are good irregardless if it's a sunny or, or a cloudy day. And all those reasons um, develop my character, refine my faith, and make me the person and the husband and the dad and the coach that I want to be. And so I enjoy all the moments. Brian, welcome to THI. Elliot Cadeau finished with the game half plus 20, um, game half four assist, and had zero turnovers. Um, what can you just say about his performance tonight? Yeah, I thought he was, uh, you know, I, um, I thought his performance, uh, uh, being able to uh, handle the basketball, get us into our sets, um, his ability offens offensively to push the pace, um, it gives RJ a break to get off the ball. And then I thought in the second half, he responded defensively really well. I thought he did a, a really nice job of keeping the guards out of the paint, defending without fouling. And um, this is all new to him and understanding the importance of every possession on both ends of the floor. And I can just see his confidence continuing, continuing to, to grow. And then he was able to step up and I think hit a couple free throws towards the end. I don't know if he made both of them towards the end or one of them, but he stepped up and made at least one. And I, I thought that was really good for him. Far right. Hubert, David Hale with ESPN. Uh, you've obviously got some veteran guys that you know what to expect week in and week out from them. But when you play a game like this against a team like Michigan State, do you learn something from this type of performance that gives you some extra confidence as you move to weekend number two? Well, I mean, you know, Michigan State is always Michigan State. It's, you know, extremely well coached. I can't have any more um, respect for a coach than I have Coach Izzo. His program, the way that he runs his program, is, you know, the type of teams, the way that they play. So we knew that what we were getting today 
But in terms of moving forward, I, I wouldn't just say just today, but for the whole year. I mean, if you look at our non-conference schedule, it was, it was real. Then you get into conference, and we were able to you know, win the regular season ACC title. So we've, we've been in tough physical matchups, um, highly competitive competitions like today. And so it just continues to build confidence for us moving forward, but not just particularly for this game, but for what we've had to do the entire season. Back left. Brendan Lunga, the Daily Tar Heel. How important is Harrison's energy and kind of keeping the team's energy as a whole yeah. up, especially when you know going down early like today? No, his his personality lights up the room as soon as it comes in, and his personality <laughs> and his energy lights up the locker room and the huddle and the court. Um, he brings his personality brings something that nobody on the team can bring. It's just. Um, brings confidence, brings joy, brings happiness, um, seriousness, competitiveness. And um, his game and his personality is exactly what this team and this program needed this year. Take two more questions. Ryan Isle. Hubert Mark Canizero from the New York Post. Uh, as somebody who's played the position at a high level, as you have, can you, what's your appreciation for the way RJ steps up in big moments, uh, you know, from, from the time you've been with him? Yeah, you know, we ask a lot out of him. You know, we ask him to handle the basketball, distribute, score, defend, rebound, lead our team. Um, there's a lot on his plate, and he never complains, never whines, uh, shows up every day, practices hard is an example of how to prepare. And he goes out every day and he plays his tail off. And, you know, what a great example for the younger players, for like Elliot and, you know, Seth and Zayden and Jay Wash, to be able to see somebody at the highest level, but to see what goes into it. Um, all the hard work, all the preparation uh, to put himself in a position to be successful. And we're gonna ride his back the remainder of the season, but I wouldn't want to ride anybody's back other than RJ. He's been absolutely fantastic. Last question, front row. Tom Shanahan, Spartan Meg. Coach, this was kind of uncharted water in the offseason. You're rebuilding your roster. Could you talk about how when you felt good about maybe the pieces coming together? Well, I felt good about the pieces when we got the pieces. You know, you, you never really know until they step foot on campus. But as soon as they got on campus from the start, and I told this, and I tell this to everybody, from the start, this team has wanted and has enjoyed being a team. They just enjoy genuinely being together. It's never been a situation where there's four guys here or four guys there. Uh, they're always going out to dinner. They're always doing everything together. Even in the meal rooms on the road, like there'll be two sets of tables because we've got 14 players. Everywhere we've gotten from the start, they have taken the two tables and they have moved them together because they don't want to sit separately. They want all 14 to sit together. And I don't know if that, how that translates to wins and losses, but I think it helps. And I think we have really good chemistry and um, we'll see how much further we can go. Okay, thank you, Coach. Thank good you. luck next week. Thank you.